Hello again folks, welcome to another video for Toroi Barisht. Um Today you're going to have another installment of the fly fishing tapes and I'm going to be chatting to David O'Donovan who will be in that seat right after this. Okay folks, thanks for joining us again. Dave Donovan, Dave O'Donovan should I properly say, from North Cork, Shandalimore, North Cork. Cork. You're very welcome to my little studio Dave. Yes, Thank thanks you. very much for taking the time and uh, we're going to get right into it Dave. A uh, good, good. Uh, little bit of background, first of all there's something I want to mention here. This man close? here, this man here has actually represented Ireland on more than 14 occasions. We're not going to talk about it, right? we'll get into that in a, in a while, so we're going to do a little bit of background first. Um, Shan Bellamore, David, what rivers are local to Shan Yeah, the banks of the Albay River, a tributary to Blackwater. Um, it's a small, very tough river. We used to always say if you can catch top of the Albay, you can catch them anywhere. Right. But it's a tough river, it's very closed in. Um, very small number of clubs on it, just one or two clubs. But, um, but it's interesting fishing, we grew up on it. Right. Warm fishing and floods and yeah. like everyone did and ah, uh, you know a few local lads go down. We clean the bank of the river for maybe a, one or two nights. Get fed up with that then and everything would grow in and top yeah, of yeah. the river. But so we yeah. just yeah. And isn't the function relatively nearby? Function well? be f about four miles to me. So, so it's, it's not too far. far. It's not too far. No. Did you fish that much when you were starting out? No, no. Um, Mainly the Arbeg. Oh, uh, just to get back a little bit of background. I was I was born in America, so I didn't kind of. Kind of come to Ireland and I didn't get into the fishing scene till maybe I was maybe 14 or 15. Yeah. But when we used to visit my grandmother when we were kids down in Old Castletown, a little tributary of the function, you know, with jam jars yeah, and, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, 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 who didn't? Mm. So that's how I kind of took the, my first step into water, um, just going down be only seven, eight years of age, catching little minnows and collies and then the sticklebacks. And yeah. The, what the are collies now, by the way? Oh, little, um, they'd be um, stone roach. Gudgeons. Gudgeons. They call them different names yeah, in different places. Guys yeah. with the whiskers, yeah, yeah. yeah like yours. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's how I started. I uh, wouldn't be happy till I had the jar and I couldn't close the lid. Yeah. I wanted to catch every one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you went to start with worm fishing and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, floods. The spinner, right? Flood to come down, yeah. Something like myself, yeah. yeah. I used to love wait for the, waiting for the flood. Particularly a brown flood. brown flood. A cow gap was a great place. Yeah, right? brown harvest flood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you can get a salmon on the QT. Yeah, if you just picked up bamboos, any kind of a stick at all would go yeah. with the worm and stick yeah. it in and hopefully catch a trout. Yeah. Yeah, my first fishing was like the way I first started was we used to go with my father. My father actually had a spinning rod and reel, but like I, I didn't have the price of a spinning rod. So what he used to do was he used to get quite a bit of an ash stick off a tree, yeah. uh, maybe four or five feet long, and then he put twine on it, and then maybe three or four feet of nylon at yeah. the time, and then he put an eel hook on it. Yeah. We used to fish for eels that time. Eels were very yeah. plentiful. I remember Michael Collins, brother of Peter Collins in Killarney, he had a hardware shop, yeah. and he used to sell the, the man or the goat yeah, yeah. by the meter. Mm. He got he had a measuring stick. Isn't that incredible? And he'd measure, yeah. You you, you know when you the only because you could only buy it by the meter. Unbelievable, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used yeah. to buy the eel hooks. Did you ever probe? Did you ever do probing? I didn't, but I saw a couple of if if it's what you're talking about. I saw a few travelling people yeah. one day with a little stick in the ice yeah. bridge. Yeah, yeah. How, how it actually works? It's very simple. When when eels were plentiful, we used to do it. Now any bridge or any stone water or anything where you had a hole, the eels mm -hmm. would go in there. Don't ask me why they go in there, I suppose it's just part of their nature. What you do is you've got a stick maybe three feet long. Mm -hmm. You've got nylon of about maybe four feet long, right? You put a hook on it. You put a worm on the hook and then you just stuck the 
the into the top of the stick and yeah. push the stick into the hole. Yeah, and yeah. the eel would actually take the hook off the, yeah. and you'd feel him inside, you'd pull it down. <laughs> and my father would be behind me, say, give him plenty of time now, give him plenty of time, right? And the next thing you take it, you give him the, and you pull him out. It was a fascinating way of catching eels. Oh, we, we, George, people laugh at me sometimes, but I, I've, I've caught trout under rocks in my hands. Yeah, you know, I've never done that now. Oh, yeah, when we were kids, uh, we small streams, um, you, the trout would go in into his lie and you basically go in behind the rock and put your hands in, they call it tickling the fish. Yeah, yeah. But you would, yeah, you'd feel him inside and you'd, you'd bring him out, yeah. There's Didn't a friend of mine now talks about doing that and he did it over on the Clash Alley in Fennert, which is a great little river for trout. And what they used to do as well was they used to use a strand of a rabbit snare. And they'd snare him, they'd, you'd be able to see him, and you could right. put the snare up over him, yeah. and they'd snatch yeah. him out like that. I'm not doing that with salmon eye, but But anyway, um, come back to the fly fishing. When you started fly fishing, did, did somebody take you out, or was it just of your own volition? Or? No, um, I remember I had a blue spinning rod. <laughs> I, I don't know why, I just remember it was a blue spinning rod, and I don't ask whether it was a. I got. Um, a fly line and I put it on and I, I, I got um I put a couple of flies on it and I just threw it out and I caught one. Yeah. Don't ask me how it was probably a small tiny little fish. But I remember um going into Mrs. Lines' shop for a split cane or a little bamboo split cane ride yeah. in Mitchestown. And um after that then it was just flies only for yeah, me. Yeah, hooked from hook, there on. Hooked from there on, yeah. That's similar to myself. My first rod was actually well well, my first rod was actually um 11 feet long and it was two halves of two different rods <laughs> and it was put together and if you give it a shake like that it would be still shaking five minutes afterwards <laughs> it was so soft you know what i mean right, right. and that was my and it couldn't be taken apart right. which meant that i had to walk then to the river because no, it wouldn't fit in the car <laughs> so you know what i mean so i had to walk i used to walk to the river and back but uh, i just loved it so much and the first line i had was a silk line did you ever fish with a silk no, line? No, no. They, they were, they were. I can't remember the name of them. They might come to me in a minute. But they, those lines, you just couldn't keep them afloat. They were just, they just. Water they, they sink. Like there was no such thing as modern, like the modern lines now. But um, that was the first rod I had. And then, like yourself, I somebody gave me a split cane rod, but I broke the top for the first day. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like you have to treat them very gently, and I, I wasn't very gentle at twenty years of age. You know, but I caught my first ever trout. On a fly rod, um, my father put, tied on a little Greenwell's Glory, he stood me in the river and he said, throw it out there. And I wasn't able to cast or anything, I just kept throwing it out. And eventually I caught a trout, and that was it from there on, and it was flies, yeah. flies yeah. thereafter, yeah. simple yeah. as that, much you, like yourself. To me, you'll, you'll remember that fish, and then, you know, I went down from there to tying your own fly and catching your first fish on your own fly. Yeah. That was another huge experience yeah. for me, yeah. as well. No, that came way after and stuff like that. But, yeah. Yeah. But again, Oh, it was a wet fly, my, you know, because coming from Cork in the Blackwater, we're all wet, wet fly, fly, fish. fly I mean, Yeah, that's the tradition down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. My first 27 years of fishing, I never threw a dry fly. Yeah. Exclusively wet fly. Exclusively wet fly. And tell me this now, Dave, is, is that still the case on the Blackwater? Is there still people fishing to that? Because it seems to me now that the majority of people have gone to, mm. to the nymph. Yeah, well, when I first started fishing competitions in wet flies, I mean, I, I was... I mean, I went out with the Dick Willis's, the Germanas, the John Hatts, Eamon yeah. Nilligan, Tommy Whelan. Mm. These were men that I looked up to yeah. for, and they were the cream yeah. of, of wet fly fishermen in, 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 on the black water. And, you know, we had competitions every whole Sunday, and I followed him, and I watched them, and I, you know, they beat the pants off me more Sundays, yeah. you know, but I had my days, but like, you I mean, like Germann and there, he was winning everything, Eamon Nilligan. Dick Willis, yes, they were, they were, they were, they were yeah, yeah, they were idols in the community, idols, yeah, 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 I mean, if, and then, you know, my turn came, I mean, Tommy Wheel in there, now, he'd be up and down the bank of the river, he was a, he was the fastest fisherman I ever saw, <laughs> I mean, our methods of fishing competitions down on the Blackwater, you could be given two, maybe three miles of a stretch, mm. Tommy would have that beaten to death before he, you know, <laughs> and he, he was a good angler as well, yeah, yeah. he could, he could fish, but to answer your question, um, it was all wet fly fish. All wet fly Everybody, fish. Everybody, yeah. And did any? Did, can you remember? Did do you do you ever remember seeing anybody at all fishing a dry fly back that time on, on the black water? I can't say. No, I, I honestly can't. Maybe in the in the afternoon, yeah. Um, but as it as it happened, Hawaii started to do more dry fly fishing. I remember being on the function one night, um, and I wasn't fishing competitions terribly long, and I met Dan Roach. 
no, Dan passed away only this fellow year. That's right, John. A great friend of mine. And I met Dan that night, and I said to Dan, there's a man up down, he's dry fly fishing. Yeah. I said, I wonder would he mind if I could watch him for a while. Yeah. And he said, oh, that's Sean Dinnehy. Uh-huh. Now, Sean Dinnehy, I didn't know it was Dan up there, or Sean up there at the time, but Sean was winning everything. Sean, right. and Sean was probably the most advanced angler that I have ever met. For and his time, I, yeah. Yeah, for his time, mm. Sean would, he knew all about Roman Moors, or he knew Mark Pilgrim, he knew right, everybody, right, right. he knew yeah. everything, and just, I, I met Sean that night, and we became yeah. the best of friends. Good. We did everything together, we fished it, morning, noon, and night, and <laughs> I learned more from Sean than he did, yeah. than anyone, you know, right. he, 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 he brought me on leaps and bounds. Great, and he right? introduced you to the dry fly, essentially, wasn't it? I watched him that night, I watched him for a whole week, I watched him, you know, you know, yeah. Sean passed away again six or seven years ago now, his time is flying. Um, and, you know, he was an awful loss to me because he, I learned so much. Lots of people learned from Sean. He yeah. just knew everything. Right. He was advanced. The man was, he was a step or two. I mean, nymphing, you name it. He knew, I said to Sean, when the last, I went abroad on an Irish team and I, I came back learning something. And is it only now you know that, Sean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, why didn't yeah. you ask? You know, he was, he was fantastic, yeah. But, um, the wet fly tradition was so strong, you know, just, uh, just digress for a second. I remember fishing the competition, now it's maybe, it's 20, it's more than 20 years ago. And there was a big contingent up from North Kerry and from Cork. I think it was an open competition in the local club. Right. And I fished my normal, my, my thing was the dry fly, always has been. And I was catching quite a few fish and a couple of these lads came up along the bank and they said, what are you getting them on? Boy. <laughs> Boy. And I said, I'm getting them on a dry fly. And they'd actually never seen a dry fly. Not to mind fish a dry fly, but they'd never actually yeah, seen a dry yeah. fly. Yeah. I found that incredible because the tradition here on the shore was, like, as soon as I caught my first trout on a, on a wet fly, my father took it off and said, forget about that now. He said, there's a dry fly, put that on. And keep casting that to the ones yeah. that are rising. Yeah. And, like, at that time, the trout used to rise every single day. And that's one of the massive changes that's taken place now. We don't have the insects like we used to and that yeah. kind of thing. And like the trout used to rise every day. So you could go down any day and you could dry fly fish. So like that's where I think the, the dry fly tradition was on the shore as opposed mm -hmm. to we'll say on the black water. Right. Did trout rise well, we on didn't a daily basis? We'll, say. well, they would, but um, we didn't. We don't get the... Right hatches like you were getting. We didn't get the alder snow. Yeah, we, the alder, we never yeah. got the alder. We don't get the mayfly on the black water. I mean, very sparsely. Yeah. We didn't get those. Um, the blue winged olives weren't prolific enough. They weren't. No, no, no. Yeah. Everything was more like the March browns and the you know the, yeah um, quills and things like that. And it worked. I mean, yeah. you know, when I first started to come up fishing competitions on the shore, the shore boys would say, oh. The cock boys are coming, you know. Yeah. I was cast as one. I I always assumed the cock boys were the cock warmers, but no, I was cast as <laughs> the cock wet fly angler. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it was just the time of the day, the time of the year when competitions mm. are held. Mm. It suited the wet fly angler. I mean, and I remember you in one particular competition now. Uh, and again, that's a long time ago now. That I, I'd say it's probably twenty years ago, and possibly more. It is because it's 14 years since I fished the competition. It was a good few years previous to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember you fishing wet flies in the competition, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Because I'd never seen anyone fish wet flies the way you actually did. Because my, my experience of wet flies was you cast across the river and you let it drag around. But I saw you doing things with wet flies that I'd never seen before. And you were catching trout after trout after trout after trout. Mm -hmm. And nobody, nobody was matching you on that day. And I actually remember the fly you were fishing. It was a snipe and purple. Snipe purple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually a monster championships, George, and there was one man catching as many as me, and that was Tommy Lane. Tommy? Yeah, Tommy, Tommy Senior. That, yes. Yeah, I haven't well, seen Tommy for years. That was a, a monster championships, and the reason I remember that day so well, um, Tommy won it. Did he? Tommy won it with... Uh, Shout out to Tommy, Tommy Lane Senior. I haven't Tommy, seen you. Uh, Tommy will remember this day as well, because I, I, I don't think Tommy no, remembers this now, but I remember it because it broke my heart. I had um, 13 fish, and Tommy came in with 13 fish. Yeah. And I said to Tommy, I said, you won't believe what happened to me. I said, I, sh I, should, ha I, should, ha I should have beaten you today. He said, well, he said, what makes you say that? I said, I was up in a high bank. You might remember it, down from Camus Yeah, yeah. 
and I was bringing in a, a trout about three quarters of a pound, a beautiful trout, and I was sliding, and I had a lovely ledge down below me, <laughs> where the previous 11 trout, I just slid them onto the bank below me, jumped down, bagged them, yeah. them in the head, the guy, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. but this, 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 this one particular trout, um, I was just sliding him onto the bank below me, and he fell off. And I, I wouldn't mind him falling off. <laughs> but up comes this little salmon pal, about six inches long, grabs the tail fly, <laughs> and pulls the fly out of my lovely <laughs> tin ounce trout. Gone. So I was telling Tom, I said, Tom, I should have I won it. Yeah. I said, that trout should have And Tommy looked at me and he said, Dave, I'll tell you a better one. Yeah. I said, why? He said, they called my name out. There were 13 fish. He said, I had 14 fish. <laughs> I said, how do you mean? He said, I counted them at the bank of the river. I had 14 fish. He said, so he said, you shouldn't have won it. And Dan Roach, being the guide there, if you know yeah. Dan, Dan would be yeah. very precise. Dan went down to Camus Bridge the following day, yeah. went down to the turnstile where yeah. Tommy said that he must have dropped a fish out of his yeah. basket going over the... And lo and behold, there was the, there was the trout on the road. So <laughs> he Tommy, genuinely won it. Tommy was destined to win it. So I, 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 I have no, I'm delighted because that that kind of uh, put my yeah. mind back. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that isn't that uh, f fantastic to think to think that that happened? Right? Yeah, I should look. There, there's a story. Look, me. I could tell you. I could spend the whole day telling <laughs> stories. And then, but that one sticks in my head because it was the and Tommy Lane was mm. and still is. But Tommy Lane was no one to touch him. Yeah. The man was a genius on a wet flight. Yeah. Some of the other lads that I mentioned earlier, his right? son has taken after him, I believe. Tommy, yeah, Tommy, Tommy, Junior, yeah, Tommy yeah. Junior. Yeah, yeah. He could be here. Sorry, he's supposed to be here someday. Yeah, we'll see. hopefully. Yeah, yeah. He just he had great result on Thomas Town last That's week. That's right. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. Great result. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, you know, but just getting back to his his father, like the other guys I mentioned earlier on, they were they were fantastic anglers on the black water. Mm. But Tommy could travel anywhere and still get and still get him on the wet fly. Yeah. You know, he knew his stuff. Yeah, he really did. You know, when did you first run into nymph fishing or hear of it or see it or? Yeah, look, at, like obviously I met in, in a couple of Irish teams along the way, and I went abroad and Dennis Cronin um, from McCroom from McCroom yeah. uh, brought in a couple of guys here, Hannah and Bishek and, and and Pepsi. They brought him to Ireland because we were going to Slovakia. And they brought on these. There was no beading back then. It was just weighted nymphs. Yeah. Tungsten beads were unheard of. Yeah. Well, we didn't settle in. The yeah. Polish lads didn't even seem to have them. So when Dennis brought those guys here, I spent two weeks just doing that. We weren't catching hardly anything. Yeah. But we were just. You were learning the technique. Yeah. I mean, it was like up down in the Karate Kid. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was just doing that, catching very little. But when we went abroad, we were doing that, and we were catching grayling, and we were catching rainbows, and we were catching the because right. they're most of the rivers are stocked, and they're more yeah. most more dense fish. Yeah. So, um, but that was my first taste of of, of 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 nymphing, and then you know a couple of other Irish teams went abroad, and they you know we were gathering information the whole time, mm -hmm. and it's just balloon now. Everyone is doing it. Yeah, that's I I, mean, I was talking to when I was talking to David Anshul during the last chat I had, um, we were talking about that, and I was saying that. The newcomers to the sport, we call them the fellows who've come into the sport, and the ladies, of course, who've come into the sport in the last 10 years. They're ex they seem to be exclusively nymph fishermen. Mm -hmm. that they, it's, it's Euro nymphing, and I don't ever see them doing anything else. Now, I know it's a great technique, you catch a lot of fish, but as I was saying to David Anshul, I know whether you'd agree with me, they're missing something as well. Oh, the fact know. that they're not fishing, we say, the traditional wet fly, they haven't experienced that, and in a lot of cases, they haven't fished a dry fly either, which, in my view, is the creme de la creme of the sport. You know what I mean? They're exclusively, it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Euro yeah. Well, a little bit of dry dropper is in as well. There's a little bit of casting involved, uh, you know, for dry dropper. Look, it's a, a great technique. It works. Um, but, again, just to go back to Thomastown last weekend, there was 4,000 plus fish caught. Now, the beauty of that was, with about two weeks... Of the, of the pra building up to the practice, I went down with a couple of lads and I took out my wet fly rod. Yeah. And I had a very good day. Good. I mean, and I, I, I have a chosen circle of friends that I told lads, wet flies are going to work here. Yeah, yeah. Again. yeah. But like all true fishermen, it spread like wildfire. Yeah. And I would honestly say there was the bones of, you know, maybe out of over 4,000 fish that was caught last weekend, there was maybe 12 to 1,500 I was caught in wet flies. Really? 
you know, there was fellas coming in, Dave Cochran, I think, had, uh, had 90 out of 111 right. were on wet flies. Um, fellas that don't fish wet flies, right. they were catching them on wet flies. Yeah, which goes to show that the old techniques are still relevant. Oh, they still they work. work. You know, a wet fly will cover the, cover the area. Yeah. It will tell you where the fish are. Yeah. It will tell you the depth that they're at. Yeah. You catch fish that you can't physically wade out to. Yes. You can catch them in twos. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and trees. So, yeah, and trees. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're great for small fish, mm. which was last week. No, um, every dog is this day. I mean, just nymphing is probably the number one go-to method at the moment. It well, is, it is. Yeah. Fast and yeah, 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 yeah. And w w if you were given a choice now and you had to choose between say nymphing and wet flies and you couldn't fish anymore, you, yeah. that you had to choose one for the rest of your fishing. I'd have to say nymphing. You'd yeah. have to go nymphing. I would because I like to. Tra I mean, my my two greatest passions are fishing and travelling. Right. And I like to go abroad. I love my and when you go abroad, wet fly doesn't seem to work so good abroad. Right. So I mean, some countries are one fly only. Yeah. So, um, so I'd have to say nymphing, nymphing. would probably be right. my number right. one. And like I like my dry fly fishing. I'm not the worst dry fly. Not yeah. the best, but I'm not the worst. Yeah. But um, I'd hold my own. I, I, I like my dry fly fishing. I mean, every, who doesn't like to see a trout come, come up and take like off the surface? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's my, my chosen. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw a thing recently where, where you were involved in a competition. That, um, how was it called? Fly Fishing Live or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Where you, you, you yeah. competed against an individual. Where, where, was, where was this guy located? Sweden or something, was it? Well, the qual I was in the qualifying, obviously, it was against Map Driver in the first round, unfortunately, and all myself and Map were good friends. Um, I beat Mark. Then I was drawn against a um, guy from New Zealand uh, in the semi final. I was looking, you know, I was, I beat him. That was, um, and then the guy from Finland in the, in yeah. the final. Just by the way, folks, this was live streamed on the internet where Dave was fishing on uh, the River Noor. And where was this guy fishing? The other guy? He, the other guy, he was from Finland. I think he had a big advantage over you. Yeah, he, he? they were fishing all coarse fish. Yeah, he had five or six species. Yeah. And you only had one. Oh, he had, I think it was 24 species in that river. Really? Yeah, I think it was oh, 44. It was really? a huge amount. But look, I there was only brown trout in my river. If I could catch other species, I would have. Yeah. You know. Uh, well, you did very well. I yeah, I had 45 in, in an hour, which is, you know. 45 I, trout in an hour is... Yeah. That's a that's good. That's it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. That's I yeah. Cool. I mean, I've done it before. I've had more than that in an hour in practice. But who doesn't? Everyone right. does it, everything right. in practice. Yeah. But again, yeah. I, it was it was fantastic. It, there's another series. Series two is coming shortly, and it's yeah. going to be world or all over the world. So I'm looking forward right. to that. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and the Facebook competition. Um, you know, it was great that. You know, everybody in the country was watching it, and hopefully worldwide, because I have family in America. Right. Um, I have family in Australia, and they were all tuned in. I said, you know, no one ever comes, to, you know, no one ever sees sees someone fishing. You have to kind of come to the river, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, so, you know, you might bring home a few fish, and they say, yeah, you got a few, but no one actually sees, you know, what, what I'm actually right. doing physically, <laughs> or are you sitting down on a bank with a... Yeah, yeah, that's you know, what people's perception, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's so easy. I come yeah. home, and I'd be down, taking two or three pounds weight after doing a hard day's fishing. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, you know, I kids, there was a party in my house, you know, my mother was there with her flag, my wife and my kids. <laughs> Fantastic. All watching, my neighbours came up, there was people in the house, and they were all watching this competition on Facebook, and, you know... Even though I was beaten in the final, but you know they thought I would. It didn't. It didn't matter. You know the wonders was, of the internet. Yeah, it was fantastic. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah, it's a great competition, and it, it, it's going to take off because, um, you know, you can take on a guy at the other side of the world. It's live, um, and it's, it's getting huge response, and there's more and more people um, inquiring about it. So, hopefully, um, you yeah. know, people tune in and watch it. Yeah. And the, it, it, just one more thing, the, the the wonders of of the internet is bringing a lot more people into the sport. And just just a hint on it, um, when if you draw a comparison with years ago, where you spoke about that competition in, in Thomastown, where there was how many trout caught? Over 4,000. Over 4,000 yeah. thousand trout caught in two days. Yeah. That's an unbelievable amount of fish. Huge. And had that competition been held 25 years ago, all those fish might have been killed. But then I don't yeah. believe they would have caught that many back then. Well, no, I mean, it was an all fish. So, I mean, when we were killing the fish, it might be a nine or a ten inch limit. So, you yeah, know, all fish. So you All fish count. Yeah, all fish count. And what percentage, I know it's difficult for you to say, but what percentage of those fish, of those 4,000 fish, 
would have qualified, we'd say, for a competition bag. Very few. Very um, percentage wise, no. would you make a hazard a guess? Oh, I, I'd say less than ten percent. Less than ten. Less than ten percent. Yeah. So I mean, would be... I mean the, the winning the winning team might have had two hundred and fifty fish. Maybe twenty or twenty five of those might have been um, competition. We say ten inch plus size. Right. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So the the catch and release ethos is a great thing. Oh, it, it is. It is, and it it, it brings on to say the lesser angler because everyone is catching. Yeah. Everyone is catching yeah. fish and. You know, you get your all methods going and, um, yeah. you know, the net is in the water more than, you know. And plus, I honestly believe that the, the, the cream will come to the top. Irrespective. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the, sometimes the luckiest angle wins. Yeah. You don't want that. I mean, uh, Tommy Lane and Mickey Foley, that won it this year. And, you know, they only barely won it. It was so close at the top, you know, Darius yeah. and Marius was there. Um, just it eludes me know who was second. Um, they'll kill me. Um <laughs> Or the two, the, 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 the Sloan brothers from the north of Ireland, you know, they were leading right up to the last minute, you know, yeah. it was it was that close, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you know, even the, 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 there was a few youth there, you know, and it's a, that's another thing I'll have to bring in for that competition. I think it should be compulsory that whoever is the captain of the Irish youth team should bring those youth to that competition. Absolutely. And just see the way that yeah. the format is done. The way the scores are done, yeah. the way the anglers go to their beats, you know, yeah. it's it's a great learning experience. Yeah. And they're so yeah. well organised. Oh, great credit due to the people who are in the Thomas Town Club up there. They're fantastic. Yeah, they're second to none. And and Mount Juliet giving them water like that is fantastic. I we'll mean, be talking to Peter soon. Hopefully, he'll be sitting where you are very shortly oh. if we don't get locked down. Yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, hopefully yeah. not. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Tell me this, Dave. Now. You are a man roughly the same age as myself. We're no longer spring chickens, so to speak. <laughs> what is it that keeps you interested in the competitions? What, what is it that drives you? Um, the knowledge, learning. Right. I, I can't stop learning. Right. I tell you, I could be in bed and jump out of bed and go down to the room and try to fly. <laughs> I, I'm on the internet, I'm reading books, I, yeah. I, and I have a fantastic bunch of friends. Right. And we're always gathering information right. and learning. I just think it's the learning... I just and and traveling as I say I love going abroad. Yeah. I, I that's but competitions again it's the camaraderie. Yeah. And I'm competitive. I I will admit I don't like coming second. Don't but, you, coming <laughs> <first. laughs> but you not you not think like maybe I, I was speaking for myself now. I find that I I'm slowing down right a bit, and that I wouldn't be as um, sure of my footing as I used to be, and that. I watched you in action in that particular thing, that, that live stream thing, and you were moving very quickly, and I'm quite sure that the younger guys can move maybe twice yeah. as fast, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, look, I won't say I look after myself, but I'm down a couple of stone, believe it or not, I lost a bit of weight there right. as well, because I was getting a bit higher, and you have to, I mean, if you want to compete, you have to, and yeah. you know, from, from, you know, I want to be healthy anyway, everyone course, likes to be healthy, but you know, but you know, with that Facebook competition coming up, I know it was it was friendly and everything like that. But again, it was just the side of me that wants to do well. And right. if you're two stone, it's two stone too yeah, many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I was always good at waiting. I, I'm, I have no fear in water, which right. you know, maybe I should have. But um, I, go, uh, you got respect for it, of course. Yeah, right? yeah. But yeah, I'm not a great swimmer, but mm. great swimmers get drawn to. But I, 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 I like the competitive side of things, right. you know. But and again, the new system of having only maybe a hundred meters. Yes. You don't have to be as physical, as right. physically fit as you used to be when when we were fishing our monster championships or all Ireland's. You could be given two miles. You'd be chasing Tommy Whelan around the place again, yeah. or Tom Beecher. My God, you couldn't keep up to them. They were, like, <laughs> they were, you know, they were up and down. So <laughs> the new format, you get a hundred meters yeah, and you get, you get yeah. down, yeah. Yeah, happy days. <laughs> and you you represented Ireland. Um, Numerous times, you must be rightly proud of that. Of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're representing Ireland. What, what more can you ask yeah, for? Yeah. I mean, and you're doing it in in fishing, and you're going around the world, and you're meeting, you know, the the best fishermen in the world, and you're mm. picking up little things, and you're. And how does Ireland perform generally? I, I'm not all fair. Yeah, but no, when, when when I first started, the results would come up on the board, you'd start to the bottom to see where Ireland. You know. Yeah. No. Now you look in the middle of the table, you know, mm -hmm. it, we're definitely able to compete. Right. There's, there's guys out there winning sessions. Um, um, I've been lucky, 
you know, when Ireland held this in um, 2016, I think, and it was held in Ireland, you know, if if someone was in, if someone in Ireland was going to do a way that was going to be in Ireland, so I was lucky enough to win a bronze medal in the European Championships. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was on lakes in Killarney. It wasn't my forte, but you know, I practiced hard down there. I went down there as often as I could. But, um, but we're not as we're getting there. Right. Yeah, and tell me this: what, what, what have you identified? Would we'll say the 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 element that makes would we'll say who generally wins at the polls or the Czechs or. Well, the Czechs and the French. Okay, yeah. what is what element? Uh, what is it that makes them consistently winners? And Ireland aren't we say in the same league? Have you identified that? Yeah, in, in a nutshell, they're professionals. Really, they're, they're professionals. They're they're at this morning, noon, and night. They, right. They're they're paid. It's their profession. Really? Oh yeah. They I get mean, paid for it. Well, it's their livelihood. You Seriously. know, they're they're, they're guiding. They're they're. They're, they're, rep they're everything, you know, they're, they got their sponsors. They spend their um, whole life at yeah, it. Yeah, they're, at it. They're, they're doing their competitions, their circuits. Yeah, Whereas, so. You know, we we have nothing. I mean, we go to, I sit from Peter there now and um, Robbie Field, and we go to Wales every year to um, the, the Hannock um, Grading Festival. Right. Uh, we've been lucky to have won that twice. Lovely. Yeah, um, but if we. We have to take the initiative to go where these guys are invited to go. Yeah, I have you know, where we yeah. have to do the homework and get there. And you don't have any sponsors. Oh, it's it's at your own expense that oh, you're going. Yeah, expense, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like these guys are supported by tackle manufacturers or whatever the case exactly. may be, yeah. and you have no. Do you get any support from, we'll say, sporting or sport government sporting organisations? Or yeah. Well, in fairness, um, there's a few organisations where they mean to be taffy do their own little bit of they help, you know. Right. But you know. They're, they're limited resources as well, so they can. Mm. But yeah, I mean, everyone does their own little bit of research, get their own little sponsorship from their own local um, right. companies and stuff yeah. like that. They do, in fairness, right. yeah, and they're great, you know. But that only lasts for so long. I mean, I've been lucky to be on a few Irish teams. You can only go to the well so many times, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I, I, you know, even though I think I've qualified for a team for next year or the year after now with COVID, but I don't think I'll go anymore. It's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's not, um, the world and European side of things don't, doesn't appeal to me anymore. I'm getting a bit long to the and as yeah. you said earlier on, and, um, it's a two week, you know, it's for two weeks, you yeah. know, and, and you have to really put in the effort. Yeah, I know what you mean. Not, just not. I'm not yeah. up for that anymore. You fellas in the thirties for that crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well um Santi there he won the, the world championships at the age of fifty four and he won it again in fifty five, he won it two years back really? to back in a tournament. He two two wins in a second, I think, in three years so yeah. uh, age isn't the isn't the barrier, it's just that um yeah. no, not in fishing. Not yeah. not in the format of only hundred metres to, right. to fish. No, I understand, no, yeah. No, no. Yeah. no, just to change the subject a little I want to talk about gear a bit. Um mm -hmm. Of course, there's huge advances in the gears. We were talking about the the, the, <laughs> the rubbish we had when we were kids, we call it. But like the gear nowadays is just so good, you know. Yeah. And there's new innovations all the time and all the rest of it. But like, personally, I I find it hard to see value in in a, a rod that costs a thousand pounds or a thousand euros when a a rod that might cost a quarter that so you can thing. essentially do the same thing, you know. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about that, I I I, hundred percent of what you said. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I have a I have a couple of rods at home that they're up in the wall with twenty years, and I still go to them. They're still yeah. my go to, especially my wet my wet fly ride. But yeah. it's it's a, it's a sage. It's it's a good ride. I mean, yeah. but it's one of the older versions. Yeah, it's not an RPL. Yeah, yeah, it's an XP. XP. Yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah. ride. Oh, fan. Yeah. I think it's the best ride ever made. But yeah, um, nymphing wise. I don't know if I can use all these names, but I'm using a syndicate now all the time. I, yeah. I, I, I think they're a fantastic ride, you know, right. they're, 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 and not the most expensive ride in the yeah. world, but it's a good all round ride. Right. Uh, but again, you know, waders is the same thing, a thousand quid, yeah. 300 quid, does barbed wire care? Yeah, what? yeah absolutely, <laughs> how much they cost. Yeah. Yes. Um, just to talk about flies for a minute, um, I've been tying flies all my life like yourself and um i have my own theories and all the rest of us do, do you think like i don't know if you watched my last video or one of my videos about this kind of people newcomers in particular tend to get caught up in a bit of the exact representation right. sort of thing you know and it's very very rarely 
in my experience, that you need an exact or as near an exact replica as you can get of a particular insect. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, again, um, I t totally agree in, in what you had in your video as well. And again, I, I, uh, um, I watched another episode there with uh, Howard Cross there lately where um, he also has the same, I think, theory as me and you that it's not about the exactness of how many tons you have in your fly or yeah. the exact colours. It's where you put it. It's how you present it. It's it's the knowledge of how close you can get to the fish. The, yeah. the, the river craft, essentially. The river craft. Yeah. Um, drag. Jeez, that very bad word. Drag. No yeah, one yeah. wants drag. And yeah. we get underwater drag and nymphs. People do. don't realise yes. that. Um, that's why another... Um, thing I'm doing off that lately is fishing one nymph rather than two. Yes. Because I just feel that one nymph is fishing much, much more natural than yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, because you have co if you have conflicting currents, obviously they're pulling against each other. Exactly. And they're behaving like yeah, unnaturally, yeah. if you like. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the exact representation thing, and like I've heard arguments between anglers discussing the merits of one fly versus another and how closely it represents a natural insect. And I think they kind of missed the point. Mm -hmm. Like, I always maintain that Get as close as you can, and then if a trout is, is we we'll say, feeding on the surface, if you put any, if you can present your fly any way reasonably right, so that he doesn't know essentially that you're attached to the other end of it, mm -hmm. well then he likely take your fly, right. irrespective of whether it's like the last fly he took or not. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, if 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 there are, if a trout is feeding, he's feeding. Yes. I mean, it's. If he's hungry, he's hungry. If it's within reason, if it's within the right shape, if it's you know, I'd I'd be a believer. I'd have the you know, I'd rather have it in the right place. Yeah, you know. same as that. Um, just to hit, like, I, I read uh, something there recently on the internet about the we've lost a you, our, our water quality apparently has dropped hugely in the last four or five years, mm -hmm. uh, countrywide apparently. Right. That all rivers and all waterways are suffering from, basically from. Uh, intensive right. agriculture, right. you know, yeah. and I'm going to be speaking to someone who's very well versed on that in time, he'll be in that scene again, but what do you see as threats to the sport besides that, do you see anything other than that that, that could negatively impact the sport and how do you feel about all that environmental stuff? Um, farming practices have improved, you know, I, I'd have to say they have, but it's the, it's the intensity of, of like our dairy farming now is going to get much much stronger. Um, uh, forestry, yeah. uh, it's uh, like it's a thing I have in my little crawl I have in my bonnet. Out. Um, forestry by their nature are grown on the sides of mountains, and the majority and the phosphates that go into into forestry because yeah. it's not the best land that That's trees right, are yeah. planted on, and it's the phosphates that come teeming down on the little mountain streams. And I think they're the ones, in, you know, it's just a little crowd that I have. Mm. I walked in the forest for, 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 a, for a while, a few years back. So you have an understanding of what's going bit, on? Yeah, I have a little bit of an idea of what goes on there. And it just needs a little bit better management in forestry. Yeah, but I think, like, to just to go back to the, the, the intensive farming aspect of things, apparently we put out more um, bag manure than any, per acre than any other country in Europe. Mm. And that's having a hugely negative effect on our waterways and like I can't see any solution in the short term in any way because the government are pushing this increase the national herd and blah 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 so like that's what worries me about the rivers because um, there are rivers in Ireland and uh, there were rivers abroad that were equally as good and now they're just basically open sewers as a result yeah, because yeah. once it reaches a certain point and once it reaches a certain level of pollutant then no one cares about it anymore then there's, it's, it's it's essentially finished. So I think that the angling organisations and the clubs represented by Taffy and all the rest of it, that we should be making representations to the relevant authorities to try and get something done about it. I don't know, I don't know who keeps an eye well, on fair, yeah, Well, in fairness, anglers in general, you know, the public, um, and in fairness to most anglers, if they do see anything, there is, um, I know, with the call, you know, we probably haven't been had, having as many meetings as we should in Munster Council and Taffy level, but um, there was pollution officer there. I mean, contact whoever it is. I'm not even familiar who it is at the moment. Um, it's been so long since we've had meetings, but um, yeah, 
I mean, you could go on and on and on about, you know, why our stocks are dwindling a little bit. You know, I don't know about up here on the show, but we've we're played with common stone now. It's, yeah, it's just a problem. It's yeah. it's it's more than a problem. It, yeah. It's infested with them. So again, you know, you know how how do you deal with it? Europe? We're putting a stop to this. So if if Europe put a stop to it, our government can't stop it. Therefore, how can the club stop it? So yeah, sometimes you're just beating your head off a rock. You yeah, know, getting it's very worrying. Mm. Now the season is now closed, Dave. As you're well aware, is it is it closed down your way? Um, on the rivers, yes. The Killarney Lakes are up to the fifteenth of, Oct of October. Yeah. What day are we today, by the way? Uh, Ten to twelve. Just something around, around that. It's <laughs> around that. But what do you do now during the closed season? Oh, I'm a shooting man. I like yeah. my hunting. Yeah, yeah keep a few dogs. Hunting. Yeah, a bit of pheasants. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't do anything fishing while you wouldn't be interested in fishing stock lakes or anything. Not like that. so much. No, no a little no, bit no. maybe. Yeah, for, just for a day. But I wouldn't do any competitives. No, no. Yeah. Do a little bit. Or again, if I can get. On a plane, I get out the country and go to Wales or go to somewhere where there is Poland is another good destination of ours in the Sand River. We right. normally go there in October. It's fantastic fishing, and um, we get the tail end of the summer there. It's still pretty warm. So, right. um, yeah, and it's you know if you plan everything right and you know you do it right, it's not that expensive. But again, COVID, right there, I'm going in. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem, isn't it? David Anshul was hitting about that. He generally he travels around the whole world, fishing. Yeah. All over the place, and he yeah. can't go anywhere now. I think he's suffering serious withdrawal, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During the winter, now I'd be just um, tying a few flies, making a few videos like this, keeping Good. people entertained because yeah, yeah. apparently we're going to be going into lockdown again shortly, yeah, or at least that's the recommendation. So, so um, unfortunately, that's the way it is. So, once again, Dave, I want to thank you very much for joining me here in my little studio. Nice that was Dave. Dave O'Donovan, isn't it? Yep, just yep. to get it right, make sure it's <laughs> that was Dave O'Donovan, folks, and I'm going to be talking to you again very soon. So that's it folks, that was Dave O'Donovan and that was fascinating to say the least of it. Really enjoyed having the chat with Dave. Hope you enjoyed it too. So if you'd like to see further episodes where we'll have somebody else in the hot seat, be sure to subscribe. And thanks very much for tuning in again and good day on Kay Good day Shib